Okay. So first of all, I would like to ask you, how was your experience like this day and e summit? How do you see the event? It was good. Uh, it was an interesting experience to see a lot of people, uh, you know, staying up till late in the college to hear out the upcoming, you know, uh, uh, stories of entrepreneurs and so on. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun experience. I I enjoyed the campus a lot. I think that's uh, I remember my first day in Kanpur. I never been to Kanpur before in my life. And the best part was, uh, you know, the enthusiasm of the crowd. I think uh, they were really trying to understand uh, or explore, as as you meant, as, as somebody mentioned, uh, on what entrepreneurship is and what decisions to take. I also interacted with a few students after the session. And they were also very excited to, and they were asking very relevant questions. The questions were not pretty high level or frivolous or irrelevant. It was very, very relevant. It appeared that they are seriously thinking about entrepreneurship and thinking about starting up in third year, second year, fourth year in your college. I think that's the best thing that can happen to someone. of GST in India, uh, how do you see the logistics sector has changed after that? A lot of new opportunities have came up, a lot of also new right kind of startups have, have been coming up. So what are the shifts that you see in this particular sector? So far it has not changed, to be honest. In last two months, uh, there was certain level of confusion in everybody. There was some enterprises which were more uh, outgoing or more entrepreneurial or ad adventurous in that, that case where they have taken proactive actions to make sure that they go smooth or they transition smooth to GST from a taxation point of view. From a business point of view, uh, logistics is definitely going to be the biggest sector to get impacted. There are already discussions going on in different enterprises at the board, boardroom level on what can be done. For example, yesterday we were talking to one of the largest uh, FMCG companies uh, one of, with one of their MDs and uh, COO and VP supply chain and so on. And all these guys were brainstorming with us on how they can utilize newer technologies uh, to optimize their logistics networks. Because right now their logistics networks is framed as per their state limits, state regulations and so on. Now they can actually think beyond it. For example, if you if somebody is having a, a warehouse in Chembur and Bhivandi and Gurgaon and in you know somewhere in Bangalore, uh, they are now they will now be able to consolidate some of these uh, warehouses. There are already talks going on with some of the larger warehousing companies of all these organizations. Uh, that will naturally impact the logistics part from a transportation point of view as well, and not just warehousing because uh, if there's a larger warehouse space, you can probably use more aggregated uh, or, or more organized storage. Uh, and so on. At the same time, you can have larger demand which can be created from the one single center and you can have more FTL than LTL. That means, you know, they will be able to utilize the trucks uh, in a larger or in a better way than they have been able to do it so far. So I think this will lead to some level of consolidation in the market as well. More organized approach will be taken and of course more tech will be utilized because now they can, um, they don't know how to implement tech at multiple locations. Now they can implement technology at a larger level. Which becomes, which brings more economies of scale for the customer and for companies like us, it becomes easier for us to train people and educate the customers uh, that technology can bring a larger impact. So I think there's going to be a lot of changes in the next two to three years. Uh, hopefully, no other policy changes will come and uh, more and more clarity will be brought on this topic. Uh, so far, 90% of the crowd is clear 90% of the times. There's still 10% ambiguity in some of the taxation rules uh, and how things will should be done. Some organizations are waiting that, you know, let the larger guys take the, take the first step first and then we will, de we will follow them. So all this will take at least two to three years. Uh, but yes, it's going to be definitely uh, you know, a big impact from all these standpoints. Right. And uh, you mentioned the use of technology in this uh, particular sector. So uh, one particular technology that is uh, quite coming up in this field is IoT, right? The logistic players have started using IoT in their particular, for example, they used to track it, track the condition of the uh, whatever the thing they are transporting uh, and they track it in the real time. So uh, how uh, about this sector in uh, context with India? I mean, how do you find this sector uh, IoT in logistics in India? So we are one of the uh, leading firms who are bringing IoT uh, in Indian and not just Indian but Asian landscape. Uh, so we are not just right now doing it in India, we are doing it in, in, in uh, GCC countries which is Saudi Arabia, UAE and so on. We are doing it in uh, Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore. Uh, and everywhere there is a wave of IoT coming because everything and every person is now connected to internet. right? And that's the concept of internet of things. Uh, so not just the assets like trackers, uh, like, like, you know, uh, like uh, uh, trucks and trailers and vehicles 
but also every single human being starting from a delivery boy to a driver to even a you know on field sales person technician everybody is going to have a sensor in their hand right and a simple sensor is the smartphone so now every person and everything is able to connect to the internet they are uh, they can be measured in terms of their location about the temperature about their whereabouts and what not uh, and from a opportunity point of view it's large but there's still certain amount of awareness required because there's not a strong business case between iot and the business value right it, the business value can either be increasing revenue or decreasing cost Uh, so the moment now more and more organizations start having more use cases and business cases and case studies where they could connect iot with either increasing revenue better customer service or reducing cost or more efficient processes and so on then more and more companies will start adopting it right now i think in next 2 to 3 years i i, I see it uh, happening only at the top tier of companies like probably top 1000 companies of every market uh, would start adopting to these technologies a lot of companies already have done it so i think 10 20% of the top 1000 companies already have a lot of tech in place uh, which is iot driven they are seeing business benefits now these case studies are being observed and being pitched to other 800 as well in next 2 years once this 1000 kind of a spectrum is covered in all these countries then it will become start you know it will become more mainstream where uh, more and more uh, mid scale companies and small scale companies will also have technologies available for them at an affordable price where they can do a lot of iot kind of stuff now something for our uh, entrepreneur agenda right enthusiast agenda so uh, tell us any particular instance in your life where you have learned something very good and that has actually helped you during your path in that you have taken to your honestly speaking i mean entrepreneurship is like learning every single day so i don't have one large moment where i learned something radical uh, it, it's a series of a lot of situations uh, a lot of people that you come across which teaches you a lot of you know uh, lessons uh, and and make you a better person in general to me i think my my biggest teacher has been my customers my investors and my own team members uh, i i learned to become more patient in general uh, i was I, i was usually more impatient person where you know i wanted things uh, i wanted things to happen more and more faster if i would call upon one single incident it would be it would be i think the day when i started right so taking that decision that now i don't want to do a corporate mainstream job which is also very attractive high paying impactful job but i want to leave that and jump onto something into uncharted ter- territories where nobody knows what will happen and then being answerable to your family friends your you know employer current employer and then the entire ecosystem and then trying to break out of it and leap, you know taking that leap of faith i think that decision was the biggest change maker in my life uh, which taught me a lot of things subsequently Uh, but the biggest thing i learned was uh, you know it's never too late to start or it's never too early to start uh, whenever you think that there's an impact you can make and if you badly want to make that impact and if you think that you are a risk taker and you are at the right position from a market point of view a financial point of view a social point of view all these factors get together uh, then you should like you know just take that you know leap of faith and all these factors will never be 100% ready so you just have to take that uh, there's a famous rule of you know jeff bezos if people call it Uh, it's a rule of 70% uh, which is basically you will always have 70% information to take the decision and people who are the most successful people they always take the best decision with 70% of the information because if you keep on waiting for 100% information it will never come and it will be too late to take that decision so i think that's what we did i had 70% of the information at hand uh, we took that decision it happened to be right and then there was a huge execution force that we put behind it to make it successful uh, yeah i think that would be my my story Something in your personal life, your particular hobby that you follow during your I mean, every day. That that I mean, uh, work is on its side, but you also have to have some particular other interests also, so that you can. I mean, just unfortunately, I'm a very boring person, so I don't have a lot of hobbies as such. But uh, I enjoy traveling, um, and like a lot of other people do. Uh, so I've I've already you know I've I've traveled across you know more than 35 countries in my life till date. Uh, I've I've traveled across you know tens of cities. I met. and these are all my travels which are usually unplanned travels so i i like to do unplanned travels more where there is not even a return ticket in hand there's no hotel booking in hand you just like land up somewhere and do it so i love traveling i love meeting more uh, new people uh, so i don't have any sports hobbies and those, those sort of t- uh, you know, hobbies but in my free time uh, i try to meet up with new people usually i get you know uh, tens of requests every day on linkedin where people want to meet me to get some guidance or have some business uh, proceedings and so on a lot of times some of those or many of those do not even make sense 
uh, but I still pick one or two people who I find the most interesting. Do, these could be emerging entrepreneurs, uh, seasoned entrepreneurs, uh, fellow you know entrepreneurs, in, investors, or anybody in general. Sometimes, uh, but I spend two hours at a Starbucks near to my place in in Pawai in Mumbai uh, on every Sunday evening, and I just you know interact with people, new people. They are random people I have never met. I have probably no business interest or no personal interest in meeting them. I just meet them, sometimes help them, sometimes learn from them. And I think that's what keeps me going. So that's that's the only hobby I have as such right now. But uh, yeah. So uh, for the final question, uh, your word of advice to the uh, entrepreneur enthusiast in front. Word of advice would be, uh, you know, uh, if you if you want it, go and get it. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for the right time to come. I saw a lot of people at IIT Kanpur who who are dreaming of becoming an entrepreneur at some point in their life. Uh, many be, many of them have questions that you know when to start, how to start. Uh, I think just follow the rule of 70%, gather 70% of information about whatever you want to do and just jump into it and somehow make it happen. As long as you want it to happen badly, you want to succeed badly, it success will come to you for sure. So that would be my advice to everyone. So thank you very much sir for giving us your time. Thank you. And, uh, we hope to see you more often in IIT Kanpur. Certainly, you will really yeah. enjoy the experience. Thank sure. you very much. My pleasure. Thank you so much.